And welcome to the Brighter Side of Life with Mr. Life. I'm Ravel Di Rafael Liwanag, aka Mr. Life. And I am here to brighten up your mind by giving you an amazing facts about your heart and your lungs. Today, we're going to talk about the different parts and functions of respiratory system and circulatory system. At the same time, let's find out how is the relationship of your heart and lungs in transporting nutrients, gases, and other molecules to and from the different parts of the body. Are you ready? Let's start with respiratory system. Respiratory system is made up of organs in the body that help you breathe. The goal of breathing is to deliver oxygen to the body and take away carbon dioxide. Now, grab a pen and notebook with you as we go through with a presentation on how we breathe. Focus and enjoy watching how the respiratory system works. Today, we will be exploring the idea of how we breathe by taking a closer look into the respiratory system. Its primary role is to extract oxygen from the air when we inhale and dispose of carbon dioxide in the body as we exhale. The respiratory system becomes critical for those that participate in athletics, but it's also essential for us in our everyday lives. On average, we breathe in about 11,000 liters of air a day, and the surface area of our lungs is about the size of a tennis court. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the respiratory system and its many components. As you breathe, air enters the body through either the nasal cavity or the mouth. It then passes through the pharynx and continues to the trachea. The trachea is composed of fiber-elastic connected tissue and hyaline cartilage arranged in C-shaped rings. The trachea is lined with ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium. Cilia are slender finger-like organelles that beat in a rhythmic manner. The cilia work with mucus produced by goblet cells to clear unwanted particles and bacteria from the respiratory system. Together they form what is called the mucociliary elevator. This mechanism also extends to the nose and bronchi. The mucus traps the unwanted particles and the constantly beating cilia push the substance up the respiratory system. The mucus eventually reaches the top of the throat where it can be discarded. In an ideal world, the air we breathe would be clear and free of any dangerous contaminants. Unfortunately, we breathe in smoke and dust particles created by pollution every single day. Viruses and bacteria are also inhaled, threatening our immune system and jeopardizing our health. So this mucociliary elevator is essential in preventing infection and disease. As we continue to breathe, air moves through the trachea and into the lungs. The trachea branches into the left and right bronchi. The bronchi continue to branch, forming bronchioles. The terminal bronchioles each end with a cluster of small air sacs called alveoli. Alveoli are crucial in the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the respiratory system. They are covered by very thin walls and are surrounded by an intricate capillary system. Capillaries are small blood vessels. The gas exchange takes place between the thin walls of the alveoli and the thin walls of the capillaries through simple diffusion. The concentration of oxygen in the alveoli is higher than the concentration in the red blood cells, so the oxygen molecules easily diffuse into the blood. Red blood cells contain an iron-rich protein called hemoglobin, which has a high affinity for oxygen, again making it easier for the transfer to take place. Carbon dioxide is a waste byproduct of cellular respiration which takes place in all cells. As the levels of CO2 build up in the cells, it again makes it easier for it to diffuse from high concentration in the red blood cells to lower concentration in the alveoli. As we exhale, we dispose of this potentially hazardous byproduct. And that's how we breathe. Alright! Respiratory system really performs an amazing job in our body. Imagine the fact that we breathe 11,000 liters of air a day as well as our lungs, is compared to the surface area of a tennis court. What? Isn't it amazing? Aside from it, it is clear in the video that the different parts of the respiratory system continue to perform as one. From your nose, nasal passages, pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, alveoli, lungs, 
including your diaphragm. Let us not also forget that the lungs are the main organs of respiratory system, wherein the oxygen taken into the body and carbon dioxide is spread out. We also know that the gas exchange takes place at the thin walls of alveoli and at the thin walls of capillaries, also known as the tiny blood vessels, through a simple diffusion, wherein the red blood cells are responsible for picking up the oxygen in the lungs and carrying the oxygen to the body cells that need it. The red blood cells drop off the oxygen to the body cells, then pick up carbon dioxide, which is the waste gas product produced by the cells. The red blood cells transport the carbon dioxide back to the lungs and breathe out once we exhale. See? That's how it works. Good job, respiratory system! For sure, all of you are excited to find out the journey of transporting nutrients, gases, and other molecules to and from different parts of the body. Are you ready? I am excited. How about you? Can you feel the beat of your heart? What do you have noticed? Is it fast or slow? Now, I want you to close your hand and put it to your chest. Like this. Can you see what I am doing? Okay, correct. Why am I asking you to close your hand? Because according to science, the size of your fist is the same with the size of your heart. Yes, the size of your fist is the same with the size of your heart. So far so good that we know some of the basic facts about circulatory system. At this point, I want you to take back, relax, and enjoy learning more about circulatory system. Grab again your pen and notebook and note the different amazing facts about circulatory system. Ready? Let's begin! The circulatory system works to transport oxygen and nutrients to cells in your body while removing waste products such as carbon dioxide at the same time. Hemoglobin, which is the protein present in red blood cells, serves as the main transporter, much like a school bus, with oxygen and carbon dioxide being able to hop on or hop off at the correct destinations. This system is actually a double circulatory system, made of two circuits, the pulmonary circuit and the systemic circuit. In the pulmonary circuit, deoxygenated blood is pumped from your heart to your lungs to become oxygenated. In the systemic circuit, this oxygenated blood that is returned to the heart is pumped to the rest of your body. Unlike other muscles in your body, your heart never tires and works very hard to ensure that blood reaches all parts from your head to your toes. Blood is pumped away through the aorta and then through the arteries. Arteries have very thick muscular walls so to withstand the pressure of very fast-flowing blood. These arteries branch into smaller arterioles, which then branch into smaller capillaries that surround all cells. The movement of blood slows down significantly at the capillaries for two reasons. The capillaries are much, much smaller and slower movement allows for gas exchange. Here, Oxygen is offloaded onto cells, so blood becomes deoxygenated and carbon dioxide and other waste products are picked up. Deoxygenated blood then travels away from the capillaries into the venules and then into the veins. Unlike arteries, veins have much thinner walls and valves that prevent deoxygenated blood from flowing backwards. This deoxygenated blood doesn't travel straight to the lungs to become oxygenated. It must first travel to the heart so it can be pumped into the lungs, ready for another round. Alright, I hope you enjoy and learn more about circulatory system. We need to keep in our mind that circulatory system serves as the body's transport system. It regulates the flow of nutritive fluids, materials, and waste substances, water, in the bodies of living organisms. 
Its main function is to deliver food and oxygen to the cells to pick up the cell's waste materials and carbon dioxide. It also helps to fight diseases, stabilizing the power of hydrogen, temperature, and maintaining the homeostasis. At the heart, a universally recognized symbol of love, kindness, and compassion. The heart is one of the hardest working organs in your body. After all, it is responsible for pumping blood throughout a vast array of blood vessels spanning 100,000 kilometers in total. All those vessels laid end to end will encircle the earth 2.5 times, all to be done in a heartbeat. This powerful muscular organ, approximately the size of your fist, is usually drawn symmetrically like this. In reality, your heart is asymmetrical, with the left side being more muscular than the right, for reasons that we will explore later on. The heart is located in the middle of your chest, but with a slight tilt to the left because of the bigger left side. In an anatomically correct model of the human heart, the vertical septum separates the right side and the left side. Because we are looking at the heart from the front, the left side is here and the right side is here. The right side is separated into the right atrium and the right ventricle by the tricuspid valve. The left side is also separated into the left atrium and the left ventricle by the bicuspid valve. We call each section, so the atriums and the ventricles, a chamber. The blood doesn't stay long in the chambers. Deoxygenated blood returning to your heart never stays there longer than half a beat. It is pumped into your lungs to become oxygenated again. The right atrium is connected to two large veins, the superior vena cava for deoxygenated blood coming from the upper parts of your body and the inferior vena cava for deoxygenated blood from lower parts of your body. The right ventricle is directly connected to your lungs by the pulmonary artery with the pulmonary valve acting as a floodgate. Your left atrium is also directly connected to your lungs but by pulmonary veins. The left ventricle is connected to the largest artery in your body, the aorta, separated by the aortic valve. The aorta is massive. It branches out from the heart and even extends to the kidneys and bladder. Because the left side pumps out into the aorta, it has to be more muscular. It is responsible for pumping oxygenated blood throughout your whole body. The left lobe of your lung is also smaller to make room for the larger left side of the heart. Isn't it a wonder how well all the organs in your body get along? Our hearts are made of three incredible layers of muscle. The insides of the chains and the valves are covered by a thin, smooth, muscular wall called the endocardium. The bulk of your heart muscle is made of a much thicker myocardium. All this is covered by the pericardium, which serves to protect the overall muscular structure that is your heart. So next time someone speaks of a melting or broken heart, be sure to remind them of the hardy structure of the strong muscular organ, the four chambers and the various valves that control and regulate blood flow. There are three major parts of circulatory system. The heart, the blood vessels and the blood. Heart pumps blood throughout the body, a muscular organ about the size of a clenched fist, located behind the breast wound between your lungs. Heart has a four chambers, two atria and two ventricles. Blood vessels carry blood throughout the body. It serves the roads of the circulatory system, where blood flows in one direction. There are three types of blood vessels, arteries, veins, and capillaries. Blood carries nutrients, oxygen, water, and waste products to and from the different body cells. The blood consists of a liquid portion called plasma and a solid component called blood cells. The red blood cells carry oxygen, while the white blood cells help to fight infections and the platelets help in blood clotting. Blood follows three pathways of circulation, pulmonary circulation, 
coronary circulation and systemic circulation. Perfectly amazing, heart as the main organ of circulatory system never get tired of pumping blood for us to live. That's how our heart works. Heart and lungs are the two powerful organs of the body. They regulate the smooth relationship of one system to another by providing and supplying enough oxygen and taking it out a toxic carbon dioxide. The sincere relationship of heart and lungs which keeps every individual alive is really an amazing evidence on how they work together in their respective system of a human body. Since heart and lungs are intimately connected to each other, the truth is, once the other is affected, the other will be affected too. Remember, heart plus lungs equals the power duo. Their journey will never stop here for as long as you have the courage to live. Your heart will continue to beat and pump blood and obviously your lungs will get enough of oxygen and get rid of carbon dioxide. Like our heart and our lungs, let us keep in our mind that once we help together and work together as one, nothing is impossible. I hope you enjoy and learn today. Have a great day. And this has been Mr. Light saying, always look on the brighter side of life and enjoy while learning.